It's always good to have friends from different avenues and walks of life. Shout out to my boy Frank, who is an expert mushroom grower. He grows all types of edible mushrooms. And guess what? He has all these spent mushroom blocks that he has no use for. So I called him and asked him, can I have them? And guess what he said? Come get them. So now, every Saturday, I'm at Frank's house. All right. Now it's time to do something with these peppers. I sat them in the dehydrator for about 10 hours at 125 degrees. And now it's time to turn them into crushed red pepper flakes. But before you can do that, you need to make sure that the peppers are actually fully dry. And the best way that I know how to do that is by picking them up and seeing if it'll crunch between your fingers. Make sure you remove any red peppers that are not fully dry because a moist pepper can cause moisture in your red pepper flakes, which will lead to mold and all sorts of other issues. And it will shorten the length of time that we're able to store these red pepper flakes in our cabinet. So let's just dump all these peppers into the food processor, the same food processor that I use to make my baby's baby food and blend them. Since they're different types of peppers, I'm putting them in different jars. We have the red shishito pepper flakes going in one jar and Thai chili peppers will go in a separate jar. I'll be using those to make hot chili oil. Don't forget to clean up when you're finished and make sure you wash out that food processor. All right, let's get outside. I have all this mint and lemon balm that's been going crazy. It's actually blocking the walkway. So today's the day we're actually going to do something about it. Let's harvest it and then dry it out. I don't know about you, but I don't harvest my basil as often as I should. Instead of taking multiple harvests, I like to save up and take one big harvest a few times a year. And that's what we're doing today. Let's get to it. So now we need to find somewhere to put these cut basil flowers. Rather than throwing them away, I like to take them to the chicken coop. That way, it can help repel mosquitoes, help repel all sorts of pests and bugs from the coop, and the chickens can peck at the herbs while they're in the coop. It's a win-win for everybody. I really need to fix this door, really both the doors, so I don't have to prop them open or hold them closed with these sticks. Yeah, we'll get to that. 
But for now, let's clone some basil. Propagating basil is pretty easy to do. Just cut some branches that are about four inches long and make sure you remove the leaves from the bottom third of the stem. And then place the stem in a jar of water. Make sure to change that water daily so that you don't have any fungus or bacteria build up in the jar. After a week or so, you'll have some roots and you can transplant these things back into a four inch pot or back into your garden. The choice is yours. Now let's get to the good part. Shout out to my man Frank for all these mushroom blocks. You're gonna be seeing them a lot in this vlog. If you don't know about mushroom blocks and you should check out the video that I talk about what to do with spent mushroom blocks. What I like to do is use them as mulch, but you can also mix them into the soil in your garden bed to help add nutrients back to the soil. You can also make your own mushroom bed with the spent mushroom blocks simply by taking these mushroom blocks and spreading them out on top of wood chips or straw or other carbon rich sources. But for now, you're just gonna watch me spread them out as mulch in the garden bed. And today turned out to be one of those two album days. So now it's Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon. Still one of the best albums I've heard. Yeah. So mushroom blocks are usually made up of sawdust, grains, and other organic matter. And that's why they're a great amendment to soil and to compost. What's dope is they're colonized by mycelium. Now, when you break down these blocks and add them to your bed, the mycelium forms web-like threads underneath the soil. And these threads are like a communication network. It's like a way of connecting vast root systems of plants all throughout your garden bed together. So it helps improve water retention and helps distribute nutrients all throughout your garden. I had some tomato cuts that I took from a couple of tomato plants that I pulled out of my yard. And now it's time to transfer them into a cleaner jar because I need this pitcher to help water some of my other plants. Anyway, I still think it's dope how you can root a lot of plants in your garden by simply placing them in water. All right, I've been out here long enough. Plus. I need to do something with all this basil and mint that I got. Let's get inside and get it cleaned up. If you can't tell, this dehydrator stays pretty active during the summer and fall here in my house. I try to stock up on as many herbs as I can while they're producing in the garden. I don't really like to grow it if I'm not going to use it. Now that we have all the basil in the sheets, it's time to load up the dehydrator. Make sure that you put all of the leaves inside of the dehydrator so that it will close properly. And once we have that, set your temp and let it run. Since the dehydrator is already full, we got to find another way to process and dry these herbs. So that's what we're going to do here with this mint and lemon balm. Tie it up into a few different bundles so that we can hang it and let it air dry. Now this usually takes about 12 hours in my house, but it really depends on the temperature. And yes, that is a frozen backpack. My daughter loves frozen. If you got a problem with that, let me know.